<laughs> it's over. <laughs> the world is ending. <laughs> the muscle car is dying. <laughs> Doesn't matter, there's a new Mustang and an entire crop of manual transmission rear wheel drive coupes for America's only remaining muscle car to beat up on. So wipe away those tears, there's nothing to be upset about. We're gonna have a race. This video is brought to you by the Haggerty Drivers Club, which includes a subscription to our award-winning magazine, 24-7 flatbed roadside assistance, and far more. Join or get more info at the link below. Dark Horse is a track performance package for the Mustang. Think Boss 302 or Mach 1. It has stupid sticky tires, big brakes, a Tremec six-speed manual, and 20 extra horsepower from the Coyote 5 liter. It now makes 100 horsepower per liter, nearing the production car record for the highest specific output of any naturally aspirated cross-plane crank V8 ever. And it does that in part by having twice as many throttles as the other American cars have cams. And then also four times as many camshafts. These V8s have a single camshaft each, plus push rods, an engine design that predates life on Earth. But they make up for it with displacement, 6.2 and 6.4 liters of flatulent testosterone. They're a little bit down on horsepower, but a lot up on torque and gears. That has an eight speed, that has a 10 speed. Just one? America, that's who. And the Camaro, because it's quickest and sounds the best. But these guys are all on top of each other, finishing within just three and a half car lengths, while spraying the mountains in the distance with the unmistakable sound of filthy V8s. Closer, not to mention a lot more fair, if the Mustang had had its optional 10-speed automatic. But we asked Ford for a manual dark horse for a reason. Those other American cars are going out of production now, and the European stick shift cars aren't. This episode of Ultimate Drag Race Replay brought to you by Valentine One Radar Detectors. Find the radar before it finds you. Not that you need to worry about that because you don't speed, right? Mm. Now back to the, um, <clears throat> speedy. All four of these cars have two doors, rear-wheel drive, and a boatload of horsepower. One of them is 100% German. Another says Toyota on it, but is actually a BMW. And the only one with a Toyota engine in it says Lotus on the outside. Confused? Well, allow us to elaborate. 
The Supra is, as you surely know by now, a rebody BMW Z4. Had it actually been a Toyota, it would have debuted with a manual from the get-go. So let's all thank Toyota for pushing BMW to put a stick in it. And for making BMW engineer a shift linkage that feels better than any manual BMW of the last 20 years. Including the manual in the M2. But the M2's S58 engine uses two turbos to make 453 horsepower, whereas the Supra single turbo B58 makes just 382. But the M2 weighs a scarcely believable 400 pounds more than the Supra. Will the extra turbo help it overcome that disadvantage? You may be wondering why the hell we have a Lotus Amira here. Me too, it just showed up, but it's beautiful. Oh, and it serves as a lightweight benchmark for performance. It makes only 400 horsepower, but it weighs nearly half a ton less than the Mustang, giving it the best power to weight ratio of any car here, Dark Horse included. Plus, it's one rung up in price and about five rungs up in prestige. So as they might say in a place from which I'm not from, let's do this. this thing. It's not supposed to be up here. The car with the second worst power to weight ratio left everything else for dead. I guess BMW can't stop itself from making outrageously powerful engines. Except when there's a Toyota badge on it. not only beat the whole bunch, but it posted the same numbers as the Camaro SS from the last race. That wouldn't be surprising given they have within two horsepower and weigh within 45 pounds, but the M2 is a manual. It should have been way slower than the 10-speed automatic Camaro. Motor is definitely BMW's middle name. Here's the thing, the M2 and Supra have similar-ish power to weight and similar-ish acceleration until they shift into third gear. And then that thing takes off, like it's got some sort of overboost or something, which it probably does. Truth is, once that's in third gear, nobody stands a chance. aspirated car of the bunch is no slouch. It doesn't hurt that the Dark Horse makes 500 horsepower, and it gets off the line like a lunatic, pulling even on the M2, thanks to rear tires that are made of crazy glue. We set launch control to 4,100 RPM, and the Mustang was a piece of cake to launch, consistently hitting 60 in 4.2 seconds. I actually expected this car to be a tenth or two quicker to 60, given the violent launch and the computer-controlled no-lift shift. But that Tremec just will not be rushed from first to second. In gear, this thing pulls like a monster, just not hard enough to keep up with that M2, which feels like it's got another 100 horsepower under its hood, which it probably does. Turbos are cheating. <laughs> The car that math said should win didn't, 
And that doesn't mean the Amira is slow, it's not. In fact, it would have beaten the Dark Horse if it weren't for the Lotus's transmission. With an incredibly abusive clutch dump, the Lotus explodes off the line like a mid-engine rocket. Pulling an easy car length or two on everything else. And then it comes time to shift. The Amira's Isen designed six-speed manual was originally designed for low revving diesels. And Lotus replaced a bunch of its innards, but not second gear and the second gear synchro is not having any part of this 6,800 RPM party. The shift from first to second can take an entire second, if the tranny lets you in at all. I know that saying this car is not about straight line speed sounds like an excuse, but when you're talking about a Lotus, it's not. That is an incredible driver's car, but it's an incredible British driver's car. And the Brits don't drag race. There is literally one drag racing facility in the entire country. I don't even think Matt Watson's been there. Math says the Supra should be the slowest car here, and it was. but not by much. And that's because it puts down all of that outrageous BMW power. The shifter lets you shift like a lunatic and the gear ratios are perfectly spaced for acceleration. <laughs> the Supra gets off the line easily and consistently with enough power to spin the rears, but not so much that it's a nightmare to manage. If you ignore the little grind into second gear, it'll let you shift as fast as you can, maximizing acceleration. Ultimately, it just doesn't have the power to keep up with the others. And there you have it. Six very different cars that all get through the quarter in the 12s. Seems these days it's not just the muscle cars that are fast in a straight line. Very annoyingly, the muscle car is going away. But don't worry, the fast, gas-powered car isn't. What are you, nuts? The Amira's the last gas-powered Lotus. Shh, don't, they don't need to know that right now. 